guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the FICO score or the credit score and really breaking down what it is made of. Um, in the next couple videos, I'm gonna show you ways to improve your score, um, also things that are negatively impacting your score. But today we are gonna start out with the absolute basic of what is your credit score. So the credit score is actually broken into multiple segments. There's actually five points that do make your entire credit score. We're gonna go over each of those parts in this video today. Before we get into it, guys, click on the subscribe button, um, turn on notifications so you can stay up to date on all of the videos, and let's go ahead and we'll get into it. So what is a FICO score? So FICO scores are a given five categories of data that they utilize to really show um, where, where you are financially, I guess would be the best way to kind of sum it up. Um, there can be positive stuff on there, there can be negative stuff that kind of impact the score. The biggest one, guys, the number one biggest thing that impacts your score is your payment history. Now, why is this important? Payment history really shows people that you're looking to borrow money from, that utilize credit reporting agencies, that you make your payments. So they're, they're a lot more likely to lend more money out to you if they know you have made your payments in the past, which makes up the payment history. Again, 35%, the biggest part of that pie. So when you pull a FICO score, again, it is kind of a, a combination. Second part of this is the amount that is owed. Now, this is a really big, important part because this in, is in relationship to debt. We've talked about the 50-30-20 rule. We've talked about consolidating and paying off the debt. 30% of your credit score is the amount that is owed, guys. So when you kind of think about the, the breakdown, this is... If you have loans out, if you have credit cards out, if you have you know a mortgage, everything kind of dumps into this category on the amounts that are owed. So between the payment history and the amount that is owed, that makes up 65% of your credit score. That's right, guys, an incredible 65% of your score is a combination of those two buttons. Also with the amount owed, um, this is where if the amount owed starts getting high and you you know you start accumulating more debt it is going to negatively impact your score the way that the credit bureau looks at it is you're living outside of your means because you're supplementing income with credit card debt which is why the amount that is owed is very very high credit cards have a huge impact on your score um just like you'd figure and that is kind of the 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 amount owed is really um the capacity that you have. So what I mean by capacity, and we'll break it down a little bit further in this category because this is actually one of the most important categories um, within the credit report, is if you have a credit card, and we'll just say a $10,000 credit card, you want to keep that around a 20% utilization, meaning of the $10,000 you have, you want it around $2,000 or less for that utilization marker. I know you can go a little bit higher, a little bit lower, um, but you actually want to keep it 20% or lower all the way down to zero if you can. The credit reporting agencies really look at two things that are very important. One, the payment history. So are you utilizing the credit? So again, let's say we have that $10,000 line. You're using it every month. You're paying it off every month. Payment history is going to be there. Boom, the box is checked. The amount owed is going to stay at zero because you're paying it off every month. And paying off a credit card really does come in two folds, guys. The first one, if you're paying off your credit card in full, for a majority of credit cards, you do not have to pay interest. That is right, guys. You're borrowing money throughout the month. It is repaid within that month. Again, most of the credit cards, you do not have to pay interest, which is a big benefit to you. Um, number two, if you're paying your credit card off in full, not only are you keeping the zero balance, but if the credit cards offer rewards, now, this is where it can get kind of sticky um, for a lot of people because a lot of people actually pay for the rewards they have. So if I have a credit card with a $10,000 limit, I have, let's say, $6,000 on my card. Yes, it's giving me rewards, but the rewards are being kind of nullified, possibly even taken back in a negative way in the amount that I'm paying in interest on the card. So you don't want to be in that categories. Rewards cards, again, can be very tricky where if you earn you know two thousand dollars in miles which equivalents to you know let's say two two thousand dollars um and over the course of the year you pay twenty nine hundred dollars in interest essentially you're losing nine hundred dollars yes you do have the rewards 
but you are still losing money within that equation. The rewards cards need to be paid off in full. Like we said from the beginning, guys, paying off debt is really pivotal. It is the very, very first step to being completely debt free is eliminating the debt. Not only just eliminating it, but also keeping it gone, meaning that you're utilizing your emergency savings when it comes to unexpected expenses versus going right back to the credit cards and also budgeting to live within in your means with a 50 30 20 rule. Now the third part of this guys is the credit mix. So a lot of people kind of kind of look at this a little bit different, but the credit mix is having different types of credit. So when you have you have mortgages, you have real estate, you have, you know, open lines of credit, you have unsecured loans, they all fall into different buckets. Real estate falls into a bucket um, secured loans, meaning fixed term, fixed rate, fall into a bucket, and then the open lines fall into the third bucket within the credit reports, which makes up kind of the credit mix. They like to see a decent amount of credit mix and it going hand in hand kind of with the payment history. Um, it makes a big difference to the viability or, or the reliability of the person that they're lending to. The fourth section we look at is the length of credit history. Now, this is one of the big reasons why a lot of people say, well, if I close my credit card, is it going to impact my credit? It could. And I say that kind of with a grain of salt, because if you've had a card open for a year or two, it could affect your credit. If you had a card open for 15 or 20 years, absolutely, it probably will affect your credit. Um, even if it is a card that you are not utilizing, the length of credit is still there. When it is an open line, it will be an open revolving line. Even if you're not utilizing the credit, it will still report on there and the line itself will still be there until it is closed. Uh, most lenders do close lines after two years. So if there is no activity within two years, a lot of lenders will go ahead and close out that credit card. Um, the last part of this, guys, is acquiring new credit. So every time you pull your credit, does it affect it? Yes. Every time there's an inquiry, 10% of your score is based on new credit. So it is the searching and the acquiring of new credit. So with a lot of lenders, um, when you start pulling your credit in multiple places, it can have an impact. Usually if it's the same inquiry um, within about a 30 day period, it has limited impact on it. Um, but if you're going and you're looking for a bunch of credit cards, you're looking for cars, you're looking for mortgages, um, it will affect your credit if you're pulling it for multiple things across multiple sources. All right, guys, so that is a quick summary of kind of what makes up the credit score. Again, over the next couple videos, we're going to take a much deeper dive into the different parts of this. So remember, 35% of your credit score is your payment history. 30% is the amount that is owed. 15% is your length of credit history. 10% is the types of credit or the credit mix that you have. And the final 10% is new credit or acquiring, pulling your credit. So guys, that'll do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about what you guys think about the FICO scores. And as always, thank you guys for watching.